Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're going to look at a new old mask technique here in Pixinsight, and this could be really useful. I actually, funny enough, I didn't really think to use this uh, at all for making masks. I make masks in different ways, but this is actually a really great way to make masks, and it's easy to do. Uh, my buddy Stephen Miller over at uh, Entering Into Space, he was the one that sort of brought it to my attention again. Uh, in one of his videos, and he had actually originally found it uh, or discovered it through Antoine at uh, Galactic Hunter. Now, this technique really works well, and I think you might want to include it in your workflow if you're if you're using mass, if you're making mass in Pix and Sight, because it's really straightforward and really easy to do. I'm going to show you how it's done, and uh, let's head over to Pix and Sight, and we'll have a quick look. Okay, so. Here we are in Pixinsight, and I've got two files. So I've got a monochrome file, an H alpha master light, and I've got a one shot color master light of M51. Let's start with the one shot color. Now, the tool that we're going to be using is process, noise reduction, AC DNR. AC DNR is what I think, anyways, one of the original noise reduction tools within Pixinsight. So it's been there a really long time. But it also has the ability to make a lightness mask and we can use this to our advantage. If you click the preview button, you can enable the lightness mask functions. Now before you do that, you want to make sure that you're uh, you're creating this mask using a stretched image. So that's easy enough to do. Uh, simply for the color one shot color, you can extract the lightness so I have a lightness image extracted now. I'm going to close the original one shot color master light and you're going to want to stretch this. I'm just going to use Bill Blanchin's pixel mask stretch just to do this real quick. There we are there. We have it. You can rename it. Just uh, click the identifier tab. Uh, we'll call this mask one. Then we can use the AC DNR tool, the lightness mask tool within it to create a mask out of this image. So we're going to enable the real-time preview so we can see what we're doing. And here we have a basic mask already produced. But you can adjust the mid-tone shadows and sliders to create your mask. So you can adjust the, the mid-tones. You can adjust the shadows, just like I'm doing here. And you can adjust the highlights to even darken it up or lighten it up. So uh, black conceals, white reveals. Now, once you're satisfied with your mask, you can turn off the real-time preview. You don't need it anymore and click the apply button and you have a mask generated. Easy peasy. And you can easily do this for the monochrome data as well. So let's just minimize this, put it out of the way. Here's my H alpha. I wanna make a mask for the rosette because I wanna focus on the rosette nebula when I'm doing my editing, when I'm doing my processing. Say I'm doing color saturation, I wanna boost the color. I wanna focus on the nebula and not the background. So for the monochrome, all you have to do is click on the identifier tab with the left mouse button and hold it and drag it off to create a clone of it. I'm gonna close the original over here, not close it, but minimize it. And I'll rename this, we'll call this mask two. And the same thing applies over here. We're going to enable, we're going to open up our AC DNR if it isn't already. And we're going to enable the preview of the lightness mask. We're going to turn on the real time preview. And we're just going to adjust the mid-tone shadows. And, whoop, I'm sorry, I forgot to uh, stretch the image. Let me just do that real quick. Okay, there's our stretched image. Okay, so now we can go back here, re-enable the real-time preview, and we can adjust our mid-tones. We can adjust our shadows. And we can adjust the highlights. I'm just doing this real quick for demonstration purposes. But there's a great example of a nice mask that can be used for working specifically on the nebula region. And of course, what I usually like to do with masks is blur them a bit. So you can use the convolution tool to do that. Convolution, process, convolution, and convolution. And you can blur it a little bit. We'll just apply that. 
just take off some of the hard edges. What I usually do though, is I have some pixel, a pixel math here, a mask blur that simply allows me to apply a blur to my image. And I can't remember where I came across this mask blur pixel math, um, but it is, it, it, someone did create it. I'd like to give credit to them. If anyone knows, uh, let me know in the comments uh, uh, about that. But uh, the mask blur is uh, some pixel math that uh, was created and uh, made available. And you can uh, blur your uh, mask very easily using it. One, just drag and drop it essentially. Okay, and for those of you that don't know, uh, just so that we can make this very clear how to use these masks. What you want to do is, in this case here, so we've got a uh, we've got our monochrome image and we wanted to apply the mask to this monochrome image, the mask that we just created. So basically all you do is you take the identifier tab here and just drop it over onto the side, onto the edge. And you can see that the mask was laid in place. So the red is concealing in this in this scenario now. And you can see the open parts of the background. Now we want to invert this mask because we just want to work on the nebula itself. So all we do is we go up to invert and click the invert button. And now the mask is protecting the background while it's leaving the nebula regions open for us to apply uh, more processing to whatever that might be. Let's use saturation as an example. That way we're not affecting the background, we're not saturating the background, and we're only saturating the nebula. So that's pretty easy to do. Same thing applies for the one-shot color, uh, same scenario. Basically all you're doing, let me just move this mask out of the way. You're just taking your mask and dropping it onto the original master light. And as we can see here, it's functioning. We have the brown color that's in the identifier tab, which indicates a mask is active. And you can also, another way you can do it is you can go right click on the image, select mask, and you can select invert. And there we have the inverted mask. So only the, the stars in the, in the galaxy itself are going to be affected by any processing that we apply to this image. And we can enable, I should say, show hide the mask by using the show hide function. So here we can see the mask, and now the mask is still active. We can see it's active. We got the brownish color in the identifier tab, but it's no longer visible to us, so we can proceed to work on our image. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Hope this is helpful, and let me know in the comments if this is something that you're going to incorporate into your workflow or if uh, it's something that you're thinking uh, could be very useful. Um, I'd also like to say thanks very much for everyone who gave me a woot woot in the uh, previous video. Um, I was interested in seeing how many people actually watched to the end of the videos, and it was great to know that you guys did. Uh, so I really appreciate the people that took the time to do that and uh, leave me a comment. That was uh, really awesome. Good stuff. Big thumbs up. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks very much for tuning in, and we'll see you again. And for now, take care and clear skies. Music